You guys loved our massive two-story fireplace that we installed in our living room while we were building the house. I got tons of questions asking me to go more into detail about the actual construction process. So we decided to build a mini fireplace in our upstairs loft. This is something most people can tackle, even if you don't have very much construction experience. Keep watching and we will show you how we built a modern concrete fireplace in a single weekend. This video is sponsored by The Home Depot. Last year while we were building our house, we included a massive two-story concrete fireplace in our downstairs living room. You guys absolutely loved it and we received tons of questions. Unfortunately, at the time when we were building, we were so overwhelmed with trying to finish the rest of the house, we didn't go into a whole lot of detail about the building process. So we decided to build a second, smaller concrete fireplace in our upstairs loft following the exact same steps. This second fireplace is a little less than five feet wide and designed to fit within nine foot ceilings. This design and the accompanying building plans will accommodate either a 48 inch or a 50 inch linear electric fireplace. We decided to make our fireplace 12 inches deep to match the pop-outs in the drywall on either side, but with most modern electric fireplace inserts, technically the fireplace only needs to be as thick as your wall. Check the installation instructions for your particular fireplace so you can make sure that your fireplace surround is built to a minimum required depth. Once the fireplace dimensions were determined, it was time to start laying out the design on the wall. We used a measuring tape to find the center of the room, and then we used a level to mark the boundaries of the fireplace. Using an oscillating multi-tool, we carefully cut and removed the baseboards on the length of wall where the fireplace will be installed. Multi-tools are especially great at cutting baseboard without damaging the drywall behind it. Next, we began to cut our lumber down to size. Don't worry about writing down all the dimensions as you follow along. I've made the full building plans available and have included a link in the description box below. You could use a miter saw to cut your lumber down to length if you'd like, but it's really not necessary. A speed square and a circular saw do a great job. We began by assembling the outside corners of the fireplace, aligning two studs perpendicularly corner to corner in what's called a California corner. You'll notice we're using a battery powered framing nailer to connect our wood together, but it's also not required. You could choose to either hand drive nails or an even better option would be to join all your lumber together using screws. We then moved on creating essentially really small walls for the sides of the fireplace by adding an additional stud for the back and connecting everything together with a top and bottom plate. Once both of our side walls were built, we could move them into place. We checked to make sure that the walls were square and plumb and began to secure them to the framing in the wall behind them. You may have noticed that we are not pulling up the carpet in the area underneath the fireplace. We're not just lazy. <laughs> There's a reason why. We plan on being in this house for a long time and knowing ourselves, we know that we like to remodel and eventually we may change up this fireplace. And if that's the case, we want to make sure that the original carpet is still where it was laid. So we are gonna build our wood framing right on top of the carpet. This fireplace is not going to have very much or any uplift. Nothing's going to be pulling it upward. So all the weight and all the force of the fireplace is gonna be pushing down onto the carpet and onto the floor below. We might get a little bit of settling as the pad squishes down over time, but it's so shallow, the fireplace is so shallow that that's probably not going to really be noticeable. If you're really concerned about securing the bottom of your wood framing, you can always nail through your two by fours, through the carpet into the subfloor below. Even if you don't have any studs that align with your fireplace in the center portion of the wall, if your house is wood framed, there's always a top and bottom plate that you should be able to nail into. Once both walls were in place and secured, we began to mark out the location for the electric fireplace insert. A lot of fireplaces have a minimum height from the floor that they need to be installed at. And if you plan on mounting a television above your fireplace, most manufacturers also include a recommended distance in the installation instructions. We added a two x four bottom plate connecting the two lateral walls together. We then added a bottom horizontal support for the fireplace insert. It's hard to see in the video, but we were able to secure the horizontal supports through the California corner on the outside walls. To create backing so we could mount a flat screen TV, 
We nailed together another two by four and a two by eight in that same California corner fashion. We then finished tying the walls together using a top plate toenailed into the lateral walls. Toenailing is when you secure two boards together by driving a nail at a diagonal angle. But I've included a little bit easier modified design in the building plans. We verified the height of our horizontal support, making sure that they were level, and then began adding our vertical blocking. Once our vertical blocks were in place, we could begin to skin the entire frame. We are using cement board panels to skin the outside of the fireplace. We decided to use cement board for a couple of different reasons. The first reason is because it's probably the most versatile. If we decided that we wanted to put stone on the fireplace, you need a masonry base to be able to attach it. So that means cement board. Additionally, it was the cheapest option actually. We looked at doing MDF or plywood or even OSB, but right now wood products are so insanely expensive. It was actually cheaper to buy cement board panels. They were better sized for the project. We'd have less waste. If you have no plans on using masonry on your fireplace, wood products like plywood or MDF are perfectly fine to skin the outside of the framing though. There's a couple different types of cement board and they can be cut using a variety of different tools. We found the easiest way to make our cuts was to use a special masonry blade and a standard circular saw. Cutting masonry is super messy, so it's definitely something you'll want to do outside. And you should probably be wearing a mask. To secure our cement board to our wood framing, we used special wood masonry combination screws. The cement board was attached to the wood studs, similar to hanging drywall. We made sure to pay special attention to sink the heads of the screw all the way within the cement board and tried not to crack it, which sometimes happens. To account for the electric fireplace opening, we moved our cement board in place onto the face of the fireplace and then reached in and traced around the framing using a pencil. We then could take the cement board outside and cut out the opening. Not only did the cement board give us a nice base layer to add our decorative panels later, it also adds significant rigidity to the framing. You may be wondering what those two small square openings in the middle of the fireplace are. We added those openings in the cement board to make it easier to plug in our TV later. Finally, it was time to start adding the pretty stuff. We decided we wanted to use the same decorative concrete wall panels that we used on our two-story fireplace downstairs. For the finished exterior of our fireplace, we're using the same product that we used on our big fireplace downstairs. They are real concrete panels from a company called Concreate. They will give us that sleek concrete look because they're actual real concrete, but they're super, super thin, just under a quarter of an inch. We will cut these two by four panels down to size using the same hardy backer blade that we used to cut our cement board and then attach them using construction adhesive on the surface of the cement board. Before we could begin adding our concrete panels, we marked where the center seam would be located vertically on the fireplace. We then took turns holding up panels against the fireplace and using a pencil to scribe their dimensions. We were really working hard for a seamless fit, so we found this technique was the best method to give us the tightest cut tolerances. Concrete panels can be cut in the exact same way as the cement board using a circular saw and a masonry blade. Anyone who has used a circular saw knows they're not the best for getting into tight corners. To try to get the sharpest 90 degree corners for the cutouts, we used a four and a half inch diamond wheel on an angle grinder. To smooth the edges of the concrete panels, I will be using Diablo reusable sanding block and sanding sheets. Before we can mount the concrete panels to the cement board, we needed to smooth over some rough edges. I've been a big fan of Diablo SandNet products for several years, and I use them on all my electric sanders. Diablo SandNet now also comes in universal sanding sheets. SandNet is unlike any other sandpaper because it's made with an anti-clogging mesh design. Unlike sandpaper, when SandNet begins to load up with dust, you can shake or rinse off the dust and continue working. This project was my first time using the Diablo reusable hand sanding block as well. The two sides have different densities, the harder side for flat sanding and a softer side to contour around shapes. The hand sanding block has hook and loop backing on either side, making it quick and easy to use with SandNet sheets. With the edges of the concrete eight panels smoothed out, it was time to begin to attach them to the fireplace. The manufacturer recommends using standard construction adhesive. We applied the adhesive in a bead around the perimeter and across the center of each panel and moved them into place. We added our first row of panels by pressing them firmly against the cement board and then allowing them to fully cure. Since the bottom row would help support the panels placed vertically above them, we wanted to make sure that they were well attached before we moved on. A few hours later, we came back and began to attach the rest of the concrete panels. 
Once the fireplace around was fully skinned and looking beautiful, it was time to turn our attention to the electric fireplace insert. This is the point where I am going to tell you to completely follow the manufacturer's installation instructions. We've installed a few electric fireplaces before, and each manufacturer has their own recommended process. We used the 50-inch Ignite Excel made by Dimplex. When we first attempted to insert the electric fireplace, we discovered that we made our opening a little too tight. Luckily, it was an easy fix. We used the multi for the cord, and then Bryce used the electric hand planer to skim down about a 16th of an inch from the bottom plate. The lesson we learned from this process was make sure to check the opening dimensions twice. It was a tight fit, but we finally were able to slide it in. The next step was to secure the electric fireplace to the wood framing. Something cool about the particular fireplace that we used is the fact that it uses this reflective mirror technology on the back of the fireplace box. I'll show you what it does in just a little bit. After placing the mirror, we added the faux crushed glass to the tray. Finally, we finished the fireplace installation by adding the front glass. The last thing I had to do was to handle the finishing touches with the concrete panels. All of our concrete panels are on and the fireplace is almost done. We did a really good job with our seams, but just because the framing and the drywall will never be perfect, we have a couple of tiny little gaps to fill. Not a big deal. We had the same thing on our big fireplace downstairs and I'm gonna show you what I did to make it look perfect. I discovered that the natural gray color of our concrete panels perfectly matches standard off the shelf concrete patch that you can buy at Home Depot. I used my finger to rub a small amount of the concrete patch between the seams of each panel. Before it could dry, I came back with a damp rag and wiped off the excess. When the concrete patch was fully dried, I used my Diablo hand sanding block to smooth over any rough spots. Next, I wanted to seal the small gaps around the perimeter of the fireplace. The perfect product for this job was a siliconized concrete sealer made by DAP. I applied painter's tape to both sides of the seam and then spread the sealant just like I would with caulk. I removed the painter's tape and it was time to enjoy. We installed a much less expensive and lower quality electric fireplace in our downstairs unit and I currently am feeling a bit regretful. Because of the mirror in the back of the Ignite XL fireplace, the whole insert looks twice as deep as it really is and the flames look like they're coming out of the middle of the crushed glass instead of being projected on a screen behind it. Truth be told, the second story loft is always the warmest place in the house. And since we live in Arizona, I sincerely doubt that we will ever use the heat blower on this fireplace, but it's nice to know it's there just in case. If you wanna see how we installed our massive two-story fireplace while we were building our house, check out this video. And if you wanna get caught up on our whole house building series, Building Modern on a Budget, I recommend you check out this playlist. Remember to check the description box for a direct link to the building plans. We recently moved into our DIY modern house and we have lots of fun projects in store. So make sure that you're subscribed. And as always, thanks for watching.